After the eight years of rule, Yavuz Sultan Salem left a disciplined army ready for war, a perfect economy, and a state spread over three continents for his son, Suleiman the Magnificent on his accession. Furthermore, Shah Zadi Suleiman had no other siblings to rival for the throne. So as said, this all was presented to him on a golden plate. During his long reign, which lasted for 46 years after his accession to the throne, the Ottoman Empire experienced many breaking moments, both good and bad. Of course, one of them is the execution of Shah Zadi Mustafa, which everyone knows. Though at that time and even today, everyone argued that Shah Zadi Mustafa had deserved the most to ascend the throne. But because of destiny, or the manipulation of others, the succession left in the favor of Shah Zadi Salem. But between these two names, there was the favorite son of Sultan Suleiman, who faded in the shadows of Ottoman history, and his name was, Shah Zadi Maymad. Today in this video, you'll get to know about the story of Shah Zadi Maymad, who was he, and how he ascended the throne after his death. But before going further, it's our humble request to the viewers to subscribe to the channel, and do like and share the video. A few clicks of yours will not cost you anything, but it will motivate us, and help our channel to grow. We really appreciate and regard your support. And please, give your feedback in the comments section below. Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent had five sons who could accede to the throne after him. These were Shah Zadi Mustafa, Shah Zadi Bayezid, Shah Zadi Salem, Shah Zadi Jahangir, and Shah Zadi Mehmed. Shah Zadi Mustafa was well educated, age experienced, and had military tactics and intelligence. There was the maximum possibility for him to ascend to the throne after Sultan Suleiman. He also had the support of most soldiers and state officials. The biggest minus point for him in the succession race was that, he was the son of Mahidevran Sultan, not like other princes, who were born by the beloved wife of Sultan Suleiman, Harem Sultan. Shah Zedi Bayezid was a complete and brave soldier. Those who lived in that period, compared him by character to his grandfather, Yavuz Sultan Salem. He had a courageous character, who acted wildly, without thinking much about the future. Shah Zadi Salem, on the other hand, was known as Seri Salem among the people, because of his blonde hair and blue eyes. He was a Shah Zadi, who had the least interest in state affairs and wars, who spent most of his time in pleasure and entertainment which he usually organized. According to many historians, he also had an addiction of alcohol. Shah Zadi Jahangir was the youngest son of Suleiman the Magnificent. He was born hunchbacked. In fact, for this reason, his father, Sultan Suleiman gave him the name Jahangir, which means the one who carries the world on his back. He was physically weak, mostly had health problems, and was spiritually emotional. Maybe that's why he didn't even have any restrictions, because no one had seen him as a threat to the throne. Let's come to Shah Zadi Maymad, who is the subject of our video. Shah Zadi Maymad was born on the 31st of October 1521 in the Old Palace, Istanbul. He was the first son of Suleiman the Magnificent and his legal wife Harem Sultan. It is said that at the time of his birth, Sultan Suleiman was on his campaign to Rhodes. He celebrated the birth of his son in the camp with sacrifices and also distributed charities. But some other sources say the contrary, they say that Sultan was in the palace on the birth of Shah Zadi Mehmed. 
Although Shah Zadi Bayezid, Shah Zadi Salem and Shah Zadi Jahangir were also born from Harem Sultan after Mehmed, but none of them were like Shah Zadi Mehmed in the eyes of Suleiman the Magnificent. Sultan had a great love for Shah Zadi Mehmed, probably because of the great love that Sultan Suleiman felt for Harem Sultan, and he was the first son of them. Sultan Suleiman often addressed Shah Zadi Mehmad as my Mehmad, the honor of the princes, even in the presence of his other princes. He often indirectly indicated that he wanted him to ascend to the throne. That's why Sultan appointed the best teachers of the time for his training. It is said that Sultan Suleiman personally trained him to become a good soldier. Some historians describe Shah Zadi Mehmad as a prince of more exquisite qualities than even Mustafa. And most probably for these reasons, Sultan Suleiman had intended him to be his successor. But Shah Zadi Mehmad wanted to abdicate from the throne. He thought that as per Ottoman tradition, it was the right of Shah Zadi Mustafa to ascend the throne. In the Ottoman Empire, the sultans usually sent their son, whom they wanted to ascend to the throne, to the Manisa Sanjak. Manisa was a very valuable place for the princes, and also it was the closest province to the capital, Istanbul. Because after the death of the sultan, a messenger was sent to all the princes, and usually the prince, who come first to Istanbul, would sit on the throne and become the owner of the power. After his education and training, when Shah Zayd Mehmad was 21 years old, it was time for him to go to his princely province. But there was a problem that, the elder half-brother of Mehmad, Shah Zayd Mustafa was already in Manisa. For this reason, Sultan Suleiman took Shah Zayd Mustafa from Manisa, and appointed him to a relatively distant Sanjak, Amasur. And in 1542, he appointed his beloved son Shah Zadi Mahmud as the governor of Manisa. Shah Zadi Mahmud managed Manisa very well for about two years. However, in 1543, he suddenly fell ill, and the prince of the princes, the eminent of the princes, passed away for an unknown reason at the age of 22 years only. Some say about the death of Shah Zadi Mahmud that he caught smallpox, some say that he died of a natural cause, and some say that he was poisoned by Mustafa's mother, Mahi Devran Sultan, due to the disgrace of Shah Zadi Mustafa, but there is no proof or evidence of this rumor. Suleiman the Magnificent was in Edirne, for the preparations for the expedition at the time of the death of Shah Zadi Mehmed. It is written by many historians that it was like the world had collapsed for him. He was drowned in the tears after the news. He especially wanted his body to be brought and buried in Istanbul, in order to see his son for the last time. He didn't wish this for any other son, because the tomb of Shah Zadi Bayezid, who rebelled, is in Shiva's, and the tomb of another son, Shah Zadi Mustafa, is in Bursa. In other words, he did not feel the need to bring them to Istanbul like Shah Zadi Mehmad. It is said that after Sultan Suleiman received the news of the death of Shah Zadi Mehmad, he arrived in Istanbul within two days on horseback with tears, almost without a break, even though it was five to six days away from the capital. It is said that Sultan Suleiman has mourned personally on the death of Mehmad for 40 days. In addition, Sultan Suleiman left the most suitable area in Istanbul, where he had thought to build a mosque on his name. He ordered the imperial architect, Mimar Sinan, to build a mosque for his beloved son who passed away. Sultan Suleiman had named this mosque, the Shah Zadi Mosque or the prince's mosque in English. Whatever the sultan did for his son was not limited to this. This mosque actually explains many other things. In a way that had never been seen in Ottoman history, a real throne was placed on the sarcophagus of Shah Zadi Mehmad by the order of Suleiman the Magnificent. 
Sultan Suleiman also composed an elegiac poem for Shah Zadi Mehmad, and ended the poem with the line as, Most distinguished of the princes, my Sultan Mehmad. It is said that Suleiman the Magnificent said, You have not been granted the throne in this world, at least you have a throne on your tomb. Shah Zadi Mehmad is still lying on his throne in Shah Zadi Mosque in Fatih, Istanbul.